evening and welcome aboard. Your Scandinavia and Russia summer cruise presented by Singles Travel International, creating life-changing experiences and unique opportunities to meet the world together. My name is Tammy. I'm the president of Fun and Adventure. And we're planning to present all kinds of great information tonight about your summer cruise. We want to make get all your questions answered. Now, some of our regular travelers are completely familiar with navigating our website and getting ready for their vacation. But some of the newcomers might find the amount of information just a little bit overwhelming. You may be thinking, what do I do next? That's why we do the webinars, because we know that it's a much more visual way for you guys to understand um, how to prepare. And even though some of you like to get your ducks in a row very, very early, there are certainly other members of the group who are kind of last minute Charlie. Some even like to just show up and have a good time. And we're planning to get you all covered tonight, regardless of your personality. Our goal is to make it easier for you to help plan such an important trip. And now that we're about a hmm, little, little more than 60 days away, it's planning time. So to get started this evening, what we're going to do is um, introduce you to Barry. Barry is the president at Shore Trips, and he is um, going to present all the options for your excursions this evening. I think the easiest way you can see from the screen here is to go to the itinerary page on our website. And um, with that, you're able to scroll down to make it really big for you guys tonight. At the very bottom, you can see optional singles only tours in every port. Click here for the website. That's a very easy way to navigate to that site. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give the, give the screen to Barry. And hi, go ahead and me. Oh, hi, Barry. Is that me? I'm going to show my screen. Yes. Barry is going to navigate. Uh, for you himself because he is familiar with all of these awesome ports that you're going to be visiting. And by the way, um, Shore Trips has been a partner with Singles Travel International for more than seven years. Here's what we like about Shore Trips. They create exclusive excursions just for our single members. We use smaller vehicles, which gives you more one-on-one -on -one time with guides. It often gives you access to locations that you might not be able to access on a big bus, and it's all single. So when you travel with us in conjunction with tour trips, you know that everybody on your tour is from our group. So there's no mingling and mixing with couples or families. Um, so with that said, I'm going to turn this over to Barry. I think everybody should be able to see the short trip screen right now. And uh, Barry, tell us about Scandinavia and Russia. Okay, hi, hi everybody. Um, let me let me find the um, the group on my site. You know how to get into it through the singles or website. Another way of getting into the group is coming onto short trips and clicking the word "Find My Group," and you'll see all the STIs right on the top. That's what we like to do: keep STI on the top of the list of all of the groups. That's because we, work we on are there. number one. We are number we are one. Are most important. <laughs> And I clicked on scan, the STI Scandinavia and Russian Summer Cruise. Best time to go there. Outstanding weather. Great sights. It's just a wonderful, uh, wonderful cruise. Um, and um, the first port of call after you leave Southampton, London, you're going to spend the day at sea, um, is Oslo, Norway. And I'm going to show you the, what we have planned for you in Oslo, Norway. We've had a lot of people who booked these trips already. Um, and if you haven't booked, I suggest that you tonight, when we're done with the webinar, just come to the site, either go through the singles website um, and click on optional tours and you'll come to that front page of short trips, or just go directly to short trips and find your group. Let's do that one more time. I always do that twice. Yeah, we didn't do it tonight. You come to the top of short trips, click on find your group, Click on Scandinavia and Russia, and there you are. And now let's open up Oslo. 
Um, you know, Oslo um, is, this is a great four-hour excursion. It gives you some time to roam around Oslo on your own um, afterwards. Um, it's uh, really terrific. We're not starting it too early in the day, by the way. We, we have kind of a new philosophy with, um, with Tammy's groups, and that is, um, that is we want you to sleep in a little bit on these tours. So whenever possible, we'll start them a little bit later in the morning, make it a little more comfortable for you. You know, this tour in Oslo, the first time I was there, I flipped over Oslo. I mean, it's just a fabulous city on the water. Um, uh, but when I was there, I went to um, the um, I went to the sculpture garden, um, and we're going to take you through this game sculpture garden. By the way, this sculpture garden has I don't know 150 or so, so uh, oh 200 I just read it 200 sculptures that are done in bronze and granite. It's beautiful to walk around this park. Um, this is called the Viglund uh, installation. And uh, the person who designed all of these sculptures um, was uh, 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 probably the most famous of all of the Norwegian sculptures, um, Viglund, Gustav, Gustav Viglund. Um, and he created some of the most famous of all of the sculptures uh, in Scandinavia, in, including um, the monolith. And you're going to, I don't have a picture of the monolith on our site. But if you ever do a search for Vigland, you'll see his monolith. It's about 80, 80 feet, 90 feet tall, and it has it's composed of about 120 um, figures of people. Uh, it's all in granite, and they're all struggling to get to the top of this column. It's fabulous. By the way. Um, uh, when I was there, I was told, and I checked it, and it's true, that Viglin is, uh, uh, was the designer, oh, he died about 40, 50 years ago, he was the designer of the Nobel, uh, Nobel Peace Prize, the medal that they put on people. Very famous guy. His studio was out there. You can see his studio. It's a great place to start your day walking around outside. Um, be, we're guided. Um, and then, then I'm taking you so, to a place that some people say is very, very interesting. And a few people say it's not only interesting, it's a little, it's a little I don't want to say scary, it's a little dark. And what it is, is the Viking Ship Museum. So when you go to this museum, you're going to see the world's largest collection of Viking ships. So by, by that self, it's kind of interesting, right? But when you know why these ships are there, that's, to me, that was the most interesting thing. Because these are burial ships. Um, a thousand years ago, when the Vikings were, you know, were conquering the world, um, uh, they had a way of burying the, uh, their chieftains. Um, and what they do is um, put their chieftains on these uh, these wooden uh, long boats and set them aflame. All right. So, um, oh, a couple of years ago, I was reading a book, and it was talked about this um, this uh, writer um, who's uh, who came from the Middle East. So he was a Muslim writer. Remember, in the 10th century, a thousand years ago, the the Arabs of the Middle East were out to conquer the world, too. They were traveling all over the world, just like the Vikings. Well, he came upon Oslo. And he came upon, he, when he got to Oslo, they were in the middle of burying their chief. They, they called it the chieftain, right? And for about 10 days, 11 days, he stayed in the Oslo area, probably longer, and, and watched the entire burial ceremony, and he wrote about it. And, and you'll see the 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 ship that this chieftain was burned alive on. So this is and this is um, so interesting when you really know the story about this. Um, the chieftain is first, by the way, put into um, underground for ten days, right? And during this ten days, the people kind of get ready for the big uh, cremation ceremony. And also during these ten days, I found out that there was a woman who volunteered to go with the chieftain, if you know what I mean, go with him, to the afterlife, right? And um, she prepared herself for 
her own cremation, right? And, and anyway, um, after 10 days, they dug up the chieftain, the dead chieftain. They put him on this boat. This woman got on the boat with them, and the relatives of the chieftain torched the long boat and then buried it in the ground, a burial mound, and you're going to see this boat there. You're going to hear about the story about this. It's, it's, is that dark, Tammy? Was that a dark story? It's, um, you know what, Barry? You uh, made me want to go to this section of Copenhagen. And right, it's just, uh, Oslo. Super it's interesting. just not looking at boats. It's, it's figuring out what the story is on these long boats. Right. Okay. And everybody's That's, uh, got a story. Okay, so that's our first trip. All right, so let's go back to the list of trips. I do that by coming up here and clicking on the Scandinavian Russian summer cruise. And the next port of call is Copenhagen. And uh, by the way, this is not a dark trip in Copenhagen at all. It's really a fun trip uh, because we're going to do um, a couple of things in Copenhagen. Um, we're going to go to the Rosenborg uh, Castle. Um, and um, we are going to um, see at the Rosenborg Castle not only what it was like living there um, in the 13th and 14th and 15th centuries, um, but also we're going to see the crown jewels. Right? Um, Denmark is now ruled by a queen. I think her name is Margaret. Um, and uh, Margaret, um, who is the first woman to rule um, Denmark, uh, in 700 years, right? And um, she, uh, during ceremonies, she puts on the crown jewels, and she loves them. Um, and you're going to see these crown jewels, including the, um, the uh, what's it called? Oh, God, the Order of the Elephants, right? It's a, a gigantic star made out of pearls. And you're also going to see, um, if you're into this, um, the one of the worlds, excuse me, it's the third largest diamond in the world. Uh, it's in a crown called the Order of the Dannenbrog, and she wears this crown. And so if you've never seen crown jewels before and how they've laid out, it's very, very interesting. Um, uh, the castle that all of this is held, held in is kind of surrounded by... Um, uh, by the, a garden area. You'll have a chance to walk around the gardens. It's really a beautiful, beautiful site. Um, and uh, let's see, what should else did I tell you about this area? You know, we're going to take in that tour. This is a tour that starts, yeah, let me just look here, 10.30 in the morning. Oh, you can sleep in. It's only three hours long. You'll have time then to walk around the, the, uh, the promenade. Uh, because we're going to take you up to the promenade uh, to see um, the Erickson's very, very, very famous bronze statue that sits in the water right on the promenade called the Little Mermaid. You know, and the Little Mermaid um, um, is, how can I say, it's based on the fairy tale uh, of uh, Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale, The Little Mermaid. Um, and people from all over the world come to see this. You'll be able to see it. And your guide will probably tell you kind of the history of it. And not only that, but what's happening to this mermaid in modern times. As people protest things, politically protest things, they, um, they cut off her, uh, her, um, uh, her head. <laughs> the last time was about six, seven years ago. They found it. Um, but they put it back on her. But this is something that the people love to do. Anyway, that's our day in Copenhagen. It's a great day. But you'll have plenty of time to do some shopping afterwards and sit and have some coffee and uh, drink some, uh, some great Danish beer and have a great time. Let's go to a next port. What is our next port? Tallinn. Tallinn is so interesting. It is um, a storybook town. Um, now, I mean, Tallinn has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, um, and it hasn't changed. And it's so interesting why it hasn't changed, because during World War II, nobody bombed Tallinn. Um, it's part of it's Estonia, right, in the Baltic states. Um, people could have bombed it, but it was pretty well uh, protected. The, the Russian government was in Tallinn. Um, they kind of protected it. Um, they they defended the country, the city, 
and uh, the German government never came in and bombed it, which means that all of these old castle-like uh, buildings are still there. So this is what we're going to do in Tallinn. We're going to spend, I think this is a pretty long tour. No, it's four hours. Okay, 10.30 in the morning again, you can sleep in, all right? Um, so the first thing we're going to do is drive outside of town. All right? We call it, outside of the old town, we call it new town. Um, and we're going to take you to um, uh, Peter the Great's and Catherine, this is like 300 years ago, they built a summer home. And you can see this picture kind of rotating on your screen. Um, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And you're there during the best time of the year. Um, uh, and the, it's, if you've, uh, and you're going to see Catherine's Palace, of course, later on on this trip. This will, in St. Petersburg, this will give you kind of a, a beginning of understanding the Russian czars and how they lived and their lavish lifestyle. So we'll go out there, right? And then we'll come into town and we'll go, uh, Tallinn, by the way, is, um, Tallinn is on like a, two on on uh, two levels right we'll first take you up to upper Tallinn and you can take a look at it uh, there's some old churches up there but we really want to get you down to old Tallinn all right because in old Tallinn um, we have um, a, a gorgeous old square um, the old apothecary is there um, and to me the most interesting part of this old area is uh, the guild house um, uh, people who specialized in producing um, uh, products uh, back then in the 16th century, it was products like uh, paper and books, right, and leather and uh, metal products, right. They all belonged, all the paper workers, they all belonged to a guild, right. And uh, there is a street in Old Tallinn that is um, still there, the buildings are still there for four, five hundred, six hundred years now. And these are, in these buildings along the street is the guilds, the kind of the unions where these people would work. You can go into these uh, buildings and um, pick up some, like uh, when Julie and I were just there, we picked up um, some handmade paper um, notebooks. Uh, that, uh, you know, they're nice to look at, they're nice to write in, right? Um, they make great gifts. So that's Tallinn. By the way, at the end of the four hours of sightseeing in Tallinn, we're going to leave you in Old Tallinn. And to get from Old Tallinn to this cruise ship pier, it's a walk. It's about a 10-minute walk or a 15-minute walk. If the weather is nice, I suggest you walk it. But if the weather is, um, for some reason, if it started raining and you want to get back to the ship, just grab a taxi. I think the taxis there will probably cost you about five or six euros to get back to the port. And that's Tallinn, um, one of our favorite ports in um, Scandinavia. Let's see what our next port is. Oh, St. Petersburg, Russia. All right, and you know what? You're there in St. Petersburg. This is a great itinerary, Tammy. This is unbelievable. You're in St. Petersburg, Russia, overnight. And um, so we have given you two solid days of sightseeing. Now, we do something that no one else does in St. Petersburg, and that is we give you the same guide on both days. No other people do that. Every other tour operator in the world assigns you a guide on a first day and assigns you a second guide on the second day. And you know what happens? You kind of lose the continuity of the trip. You're going to love these guides, uh, the guide that we assign to you. Um, they are, we get nothing but just 100% wonderful feedback from these people. They're just happy. They're uh, knowledgeable. Um, and they will take very, very good care of you. And another thing you should know about our St. Petersburg tour is that it's visa-free, um, which means that you don't have to send your passport over to the Russian consulate to get it stamped, to get a visa put into it. We take care of that all for you. When you make the, um, when you sign up for this trip, and uh, we already have, um, we've already met our minimum on this trip. Um, this is a very, very popular part of the excursion of the cruise. Um, when you sign up for it, we'll ask you questions like, "What's your passport number?" and "When um, uh, when did you get it?" You know, "When does it expire?" 
Um, what's your birth date? Easy, easy questions you fill out. There's six questions like that. You fill it out, and then our tour operator takes care of your visa automatically. You don't have to do anything with your passport. Barry, I just want to interject right here. We actually streamline this for everybody. We have a folder, and they're yes. already uploading copies of their passport, and Tara, who's our specialist over at Tour Trips, handling our inquiries, has access to that folder. So she's got this virtual access to everybody's uh, passports as they load them up on our site. That's great. That's great. Okay, um, what are we doing in Russia? You're going to see things that you can't believe, right? You're going to see the Church of the Spilt Blood. Um, you are going to see the Tsar's Village. You're going to go out to Catherine's Palace. You're going to see the um, uh, the the um, uh, the ballrooms of mirrors and chandeliers, um, uh, the amber rooms. You're going to just it's just an unbelievable trip. We're going to take you out to Peter's uh, Hof. That's where um, Catherine's Palace is. And we're going to take you there by a high-speed um, uh, boat, um, back by uh, the, uh, the mini coach that we're going to use to bring you back on. You're going to go to the Russian Museum. You're going to go, um, uh, you're going to, go to the Hermitage. And we have a, a special uh, early entrance uh, into the Hermitage, so you don't have to. Um, uh, stand there and wait in line for like a lot of the other people who are there. So it's a great trip. Um, it's probably going to be one of the highlights of all of your trips that you've ever taken in your life. Um, and um, and I think you will be very very happy. We've included also two lunches, so you at the lunch time you don't have to um, you know start searching around. It'll be really easy. I think one of the days we're having lunch out in Peterhof, and another day I think we're going to go and have some priogis or something like that and eat with the Russians and maybe drink some vodka and have a good time. Um, um, now that's that trip, and I'm going to go back to our list because I'm going to show you we have um, under St. Petersburg, we have not only the two-day trip, but then if you want to do something that night that you're in St. Petersburg, remember, uh, um, be because of your visa, you have to be with a guide. So you just can't go wandering off. Um, so we have set up two things for you, either an evening of uh, ballet or opera, maybe see Swan Lake. Uh, or, an, uh, or a ballet such as that, or an opera, um, or um, uh, kind of a folk show with Russian uh, folk music. Um, uh, we include the transportation, and if you want to do something like this, this is how you do it. Let's say you want to uh, do the evening of Russian culture. Um, you want to see an opera, perhaps, or a ballet. You're just going to click on that, and um, you're going to move it to a shopping cart, and you're going to check out, and um, you are going to pay us at that point thirty-four dollars. Thirty-four dollars is the cost um, of uh, acquiring your tickets to the um, to the cultural event. And a couple of weeks or three weeks before you go, we'll let you know what that event is. Um, and but you'll also need to purchase transfers to get there. And these transfers are sixty dollars. They're guided, so the guide is with you. He takes you to this uh, uh, the cultural event, and he picks and he picks you up at the end, and he brings you back to the cruise ship. Right. So you have to purchase those two things, and then later on we will call you up and we will tell you what the cost of the performance is itself. Um, it's not very expensive. These are government run. And uh, these are, you know, to be in St. Petersburg, Russia, and to see something like Swan Lake is just unbelievable. All right, let's move on. And after that is Helsinki. Helsinki is old and it's modern at the same time. Helsinki has a great uh, area of uh, design. And some of the world's, um, um, the modern designers uh, have their shops in the Helsinki area. This is what we're going to do with Helsinki. And someone is on their phone. Whoever is talking on the phone, just kind of mute yourself. Um, 
We're going to first go into old, we're going to pick you up in the cruise ship here. We're going to come into Helsinki City itself. Some ships dock right in the waterfront. Other ships dock over in a, um, an industrial area, depending on how many ships are in port, right? Um, it's kind of the luck of the draw. Um, wherever it is, we're going to pick you up. Um, we're going to drive you into the center of the town to what's called Senate Square. There's a large cathedral there. Um, it just gives you um, a kind of um, your bearings of, of the center of the city. And then um, from there, we're going to do kind of a drive around. Well, no, from there, we're going to walk to uh, a waterfront uh, market um, building. It's terrific. I spend usually, when I go to Helsinki, I spend an hour in this market every morning drinking coffee, eating pastries, um, making sandwiches of sardines. Um, it's a great place to walk from. Um, and then we're going to walk through um, the city itself. We're going to take a ride then. Um, and the ride, I'm looking at seeing just see where they're taking you on this one. Tara set this trip up. Uh, it's going to go. We're going to go past the Opera House. Um, we're going to go through the park that surrounds the Opera House. Uh, one winter, Julie and I were there. Um, we walked. Um, it was I don't know. Must have been about 15 degrees outside. I was wearing my boot, my fur boots, and my fur hat. And you know, because when you go to the Scandinavian countries in the winter time, you wear fur, right? And we walked. In the, it was the dead of the night. And it was just a crystal clear night. It was freezing cold, but it was just gorgeous walking from that. That's why we do the, the summer, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> well, here I know what we're going to do here. Don't we're scare them. Stop. You guys are not going to need. Um, no, it's warm. Time. It's going to be yeah. 75, 80 degrees every day. It's the, it's the only time to go to Scandinavia. And, uh, we're going to take you. We're going to take the group to the Rock Church. And that, if people, if you have, um, if you ever um, go online. Yeah, of course you do. Everybody goes online. Go online and click on the Rock Church. This church will just blow your mind, right? It's just built in a rock, under a rock, through a rock, and over a rock. It's just, and it's gorgeous inside. Um, it's yeah, very, of course, it's very earthy, but it's something that you really have to see. Okay, that's the, that's the trip. You're going to have a lot of time in Helsinki just to walk around afterwards, and if you need help of where to go, Tell your guide that you want to go to a sauna. She'll put you in a cab, send you out to the sauna. They'll speak English. You'll, uh, the saunas in Helsinki are separated, men and women. So um, so you'll go to the your side, right? Um, I, I should tell you, if you're a guy and you go into the guy side, right, and, of course, it's a, a big sauna room that you sit in, you know, in tiers with all the other guys, um, once you go into the shower area, there there usually is this uh, older woman who's there who will give you massages. If so, if you're shy, you're not going to do that. But if you don't care, I mean, she's a very old person, right? And she's seen it all. Let me tell you, she will um, for um, kroners. Um, she will for about twenty five dollars. She'll give you a quick massage uh, um, right there in the shower room, and she'll beat you with these willow. Uh, uh, um, twigs, right? And it just opens up your pores, and then she'll pour cold water over you. Everybody will drink beer in the locker room. It's a great thing to do. So uh, after this tour, I'm going to suggest go to the sauna or go to the design center, right? Design center, if you're really into um, uh, household design, household products, things like that. The best modern products are made here in the, or designed here in Helsinki. But also, yeah, I forgot this. There is a bridal gown district right next to the design district. I bet there is 40, 50 bridal shops. So if you're into that right now, <laughs> if you're planning not to be single long, or if you have, know somebody who is, you know, if you just love to look at bridal gowns, go to the bridal area. It's really trippy. Okay, that's Helsinki. God, these are great tours. Let's go. Thanks, What's that Barry. And I, I just have to say that some of the best massages I've had are from older 
Eastern European women, they're good stock. You know, yeah, they're strong. Discounting we Americans, but these ladies over there are super strong, and uh, I've just had some really good massages. So twenty-five dollars compared to two hundred on a cruise ship, that's that's good stuff. <laughs> right, and it's doing something that's really with the locals. Okay, last port, Bruges. God, Bruges is gorgeous. It's storybook. It's the little Venice. It's canals. Um, the cruise ship pier is a pretty far distance from the old medieval city itself. So we'll pick you up by motor coach, and we'll take you into the um, inner city. Um, and then you'll be able to walk around with your guide. Um, it's, it's the bridges. It's the, um, the squares. It's the old clock towers. It's the chocolate. Um, as a matter of fact, I think we are going to do a chocolate tasting on this tour. So if you're into Belgium chocolates, Bruges is the capital of Belgium chocolates. You're going to have a wonderful, um, a wonderful time. Oh, 10.30 in the morning again. You can sleep in. I love this. So much better. Everybody else off the cruise ship, those cruise ship tours, they're going to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning and right, start sightseeing at 7.30 or 8 o'clock. Sleep in, guys. You'll, you'll have plenty of time to see this town. Um, we're also going to put you on a boat uh, uh, through the canals here. I think you'll love it. You'll drink beer on the boat. You'll um, do a little snacks on the boat, and you'll sing old Belgian uh, drinking songs, I'm sure. And that's <laughs> the, what a wonderful way to end the, um, of all of the trips in Bruges. And that's what I've got for you. Um, you're gonna, the next day you're going to be in London, and um, you're going to have a great cruise. And Tammy, when can I go with this group? I know, Barry. Unfortunately, we do not invite married people. We are singles only. Um, so I apologize, but thank you for putting together such a wonderful program for us. We Great. And let me it. just explain to them how they book again, right? You, you'll you sure. see here at the cart. So if I was you, everybody, I would just start clicking and keep shopping and click on this tour and keep shopping and click on this tour until you bought them all because there is just so much to see and do. You'll want to do these trips and stay with the group. That's the greatest thing about it. You'll be with the group. OK, if you have questions, you call Shore Trips. And uh, you can call us right up here. Here's our telephone number, 888-355-0220, 888-355. Ask for Tammy. I'm sorry, no. Ask for Tara. Tara will help you. Uh, Tara works here in the office, and she's been to all these ports herself, and she's terrific. And Tammy, I am going to go home now. Okay, great, Barry. Thank you so much. I'll be taking the screen over now. We really appreciate it. Um, we are going to continue with our, our webinar, Barry. That was super beneficial. Uh, again, you're able to make your reservations online at shoretrips.com. You're able to go to them directly. You're, you're also um, able to access the Shore Trips site from several tabs on our website, whether it's highlights. I'm just trying to get a scroll down here. Right down here where it says optional and private singles only tours in every port. There's a link. You're also able to do it on the itinerary as well as the frequently asked questions. So wherever you're surfing, you should be able to access the Shore Trips site. And then if you have questions or get uh, a little bit stumbled when you're making your reservation, please call their 800 number and, and ask for Tara. She's our personal assistant there, and she will be more than happy to help you with your selection, answer questions, and I know that some of you have already spoken to her. Um, so take, take advantage of that. Um, right now, I'm just going to take a minute to introduce Georgia. She's been waiting in the wings this whole time. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Tammy. Hi, everybody. Are we all getting excited? I hope so. There's Georgia's beautiful face. She's super active, and I know she's looking forward to guiding you all through 
this um, this uh, series of uh, beautiful pores that are Scandinavia and Russia crews. And for a minute, I'm going to come back to Georgia, but I, I want us to do a little reach out right now and ask you guys to post something on the chat. If you have already posted a, um, a message on the STI member chat, go ahead and um, put a message in the chat box. You might be able to see that on my screen here, but if you've got a message to send us, or if you posted something in the chat, go ahead and, and put a message on your own chat box so we can see. We're just kind of get a gauge of how many members have already participated in that. STI has a super unique website, and I say unique because we don't know of any other single vacation company that has uh, 20, 27,000 members. Everybody has a profile. You're able to view all of that information for free. Clicking on the trip page, once you're logged in, you're able to see all of the people who are booked on your vacation, send messages, etc. Now, once you book a vacation with Singles Travel International, you have access to our member chat. I'm going to show you some of the features of that right now. The member chat is an exclusive feature with Singles Travel International. What do we do on the chat? Well, first of all, this chat section is for members only. Members who have booked the Scandinavia and Russia summer cruise so that you can engage with one another and get to know each other. Um, we post information there for you. If you have specific and urgent questions, we do certainly direct you to our help center. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But this section is designed for you guys. This is for you to kind of get to know each other and organize and plan for what's happening on your vacation. And basically, each topic is listed here. And I can see that we already have about, gosh, we must have 15 topics already. The latest one comes from Georgia. And she's talking about our theme. So that's wonderful. You'll get a chance to look at that. And she's going to talk about that later. I'm going to show you how to post a message. Let's say I saw this earlier, and often I think this is awesome. He went on to the Royal Caribbean site, and he already um, added a drink package and got a specialty dining package. And you do save by booking that in advance. Once you're on board, everything will be confirmed. And of course, Georgia will be organizing dinners every night. She'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's say you want to send. Um, a response to Alton. All you have to do is, I'm going to go back for a second, click on his topic, and then post a reply. Hi, Alton. Thanks for the info. And then post your reply. And it will show up. So it's as easy as that. And it shows your profile there. There's me, Tammy. And um, that's a reply to a message. You can go back to topic list to see the other topics that are surfacing here. We've got all kinds of interesting things. Share a ride if you want to share um, a transfer. Let's say you're coming in early to London, which we totally recommend. I would say um, post your flight schedules and see if there's another member who's coming in around the same time, you guys can share a taxi to the hotel. We also have um, all kinds of other subjects. If you want to create your own subject, let's say, let's talk about share a ride right now. So let's do this. You just click on create a new topic, share a ride. Post it and post your light info here to find fellow members to share a ride from the airport to the hotel. And then once you check your spelling, <laughs> move down. I made this in really large script for us tonight. Just hit post reply. 
so that if anybody comes back to this topic, there's a headline there, and you can start loading your information in, keep your flight schedule, uh, what airline you're on, what day you're coming in, and what time you arrive, and you may just find a partner to share a taxi with you. So there's lots of really good information here. If you want to um, send a message to somebody specifically, so let's say I'm going to go into um, the pre-book. If you wanted to email Alton, you could go into the topic, say you're in the topic, and you want to email him, just send a message to Alton. Click on send a message, and he'll get a private message. When it drops into your email box, just be mindful that you have to click on the reply to Alton in the body of the email versus just a normal reply. Our website has a double blind feature. That's to protect your security and your safety. So nobody has your information when you become a member of Singles Travel International. You can send emails through our system and that way your privacy is protected. If you want to make a friend request, that's also possible on our website. And all you have to do is click on, for example, click on Alton's profile. And right here under Feeling Friendly, it says invite Alton to your friends list. So all you have to do is send a message, to, um, invite Alton to your friends list, and he'll become one of your friends. In doing so, you have unlimited messages between one another for the duration of your membership with STI. Um, so that's a little bit about the chat. And at this time, what I'd like to do is turn the screen over to Georgia. I'm going to introduce her back again. She's going to talk a little bit about what happens on board. She's got some really fun themes um, prepared for you guys. Uh, she's going to talk about how we actually uh, manage the onboard so that everybody is aware of what's happening. And um, I'm going to go ahead and turn that over to you, Georgia. Okay, great, Tammy. Thank you so much. And good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining the webinar to learn about what we're going to be doing in these phenomenal countries um, when we do the Scandinavia-Russia cruise. Tammy, I don't know whether you can pull up that chat window again with the themes. But one thing that STI does is, and especially in this case, I think it's really going to be fun and sort of pull us together throughout the 12 days. We're 12 nights on this cruise and 14 days. So we want to add some sort of STI fun into it and to, to get us all to be creative and to sort of share our own personalities. And our theme nights that we have set up really help us to do that. So right at the beginning of a cruise, generally in the beginning, we like to have a theme night pretty early so that everybody, you know, does really get together and sort of, um, you know, dresses up in a way that they can really sort of entertain each other and to get everybody to know each other. So one of the first themes is party like a Viking. And I think this really ties in very well with Barry's comments about the medley of, of, of adventures and experiences we're going to have in Oslo such as that Viking Ship Museum. So again, we want to basically become Vikings. We're going to ask you all to dress up as Vikings. Um, as he mentioned, the Vikings were the fierce Nordic warriors, and they sailed the seas in those Viking longboats, which you will get to see in that Viking Museum. So I, I just think that's phenomenal to actually be seeing a, an original longboat. So what do you want to wear? You've got a few months to figure that out, but if you go and start searching on Amazon or Google or party stores, you're going to find helmets and helmets with drinking horns and shields and beards, pigtails, different types of swords. And also, as Barry mentioned, throughout this trip, a lot of the countries are known for their furs and their capes. So early in the cruise, we'll, we'll basically become Vikings and we'll all say the word skull. That is a word meaning cheers, and we're going to basically start off by cheering our Nordic adventure. And when will we do this? Which night? That's always a question that I get asked, because people want to know which night. And until I get on board the ship, we can't specifically say which night. Because again, we do not get the ship's daily itinerary 
um, finalize until we actually board the ship with you. But I can tell you it, it will be early in the cruise. So that is one of our theme nights. Another thing that we want to do during the cruise is the fact that we are on this cruise during July 4th and over the, over the July 4th Independence Day. So we really would like to sort of shout out and celebrate that we're proud to be independent. So we want to celebrate basically the um, America's 13 colonies adopting the Declaration of Independence by wearing red, white, and blue. So you'll have to figure out what that means to you but definitely wear, wear red, white, and blue. And if you're not American, you're probably still very proud to be independent and free. And we would very much be honored if you wore your country's um, flag colors for that evening, if you do not desire to wear the red, white, and blue. Because I think the whole thing is because of us as a world being relatively free and independent, we are able to cruise the world like we are doing on this ship visiting these um, six different countries. So that would be a different night and obviously that's around the July 4th time. So that's two nights and as Tammy said, as your STI concierge and as STI's um, basic policies throughout this is we always offer different um, get-togethers every night. We usually do a, some sort of a social hour or a happy hour combined with an STI group dinner. We do have set reservations every night in the dining room, um, in the main dining room, and then we also do set up and work with you and we're setting up there some specialty dining reservations. In addition, we do work out um, set nights where we go to certain shows or certain musicals or events together. And all of this will be communicated to you in a daily program that, that basically I put out every day. It's called the STI Daily Itinerary. And it's usually handed out to you the night before at dinner so that you can basically get a feel for what's going to be happening the next day. The other thing that we do tie in with on the ship, and this is sort of the third thing under the themes, and the Navigator of the Seas is a beautiful ship, and they have they still maintain the tradition of formal nights. Some of your cruise lines have moved away from it, but RCL and this Navigator of the Seas um, really still values the, the ability for everyone to dress up for formal nights. And we know that there'll be at least one, maybe two or three. And so again, you'll get the chance to basically go into those closets and find a cocktail dress, an evening gown, maybe a fancy suit or a tuxedo that you haven't worn in a, in a while and make sure that that um, fits in your suitcase and bring it along. So that sort of um, summarizes the theme nights and I'm hoping that we can really have a great time um, dressing up for these. Um, and all of this will be announced when we get on the ship through the daily programs. And like I said, also on the daily programs will be other daily STI activities that we do, which always includes the infamous STI Breakfast Club. We always have some sort of an STI First Timers Lunch and Loyalty Award Luncheon combined. We definitely try to do different types of line dancing or dancing throughout it, maybe some board games, um, bingo, anything else that we can basically dovetail with on the ship. And we also like to be active. And on this ship, there is definitely some things on the ship that we might want to take part in as an STI group, such as the rock climbing wall, the flow rider. And this boat even has an ice skating rink and an inline skating. So for those of you that like to be active, we'll, we'll find things that we can do together to be active. So Tammy, I think that sort of gives an, a little quick overview of what we're planning. Yeah, that sounds great, Georgia. And here's another fun thing, and I'm going to actually do a demonstration of this for you tonight, uh, Georgia. I'm going to show these guys, like when you are on the cruise, one of the things that, um, gosh, everybody wants to see what you're doing, right? We have a Facebook page. Right. We have 20,000 members who are out there. And they love to see, like, the favorite, favorite posts are the ones that show what you guys are doing. They want to see you guys dress up as Vikings, and they want to see you in your red, white, and blue, or whatever your country colors are. So um, here's how we do that. 
we have a, a, a Facebook page. I'm sure most of you have already liked us. And when you're on board or you're in one of the ports, if you're on Facebook and you're posting a picture, if you add the key words, S pound, of course we have to do the, um, the, the uh, hashtag, hashtag or pound sign, STI singles. So hashtag STI singles, as you can see here on the screen, on any of your Facebook posts, you just hit post, publish, and then that particular post with your picture will show up on a special stream. I'm going to show you how that works right now. I'm going to go to my search box, and I'm going to put in hashtag STI singles and hit enter. You're about to see some of the cool things that people have done recently with us. Here's a picture of several of our members who were just on our exotic epic cruise. Um, this was one of their dinners on the floor. And all they had to do, this is Susan, she's one of our regular travelers. She's with Doug, of course, our friends on Facebook, which is another reason to be on Facebook with our SDI friends, because you can connect with everybody after the cruise. But she just simply put in pound STI singles to her post on her own personal Facebook. And now everybody can, by searching pound STI singles, see the fun pictures. There's a couple more. There's Georgia. Hi, Georgia. <laughs> Hello. There's Georgia. And Heidi. That's awesome. Thanks, Sharon, for sharing my girls drinking a glass of wine on probably the last night of the cruise. Big celebration. We had 84 people. It was a lot of fun. Here's Carol. So Carol was also showing what um, they did in one of the courts and so on and so forth. So here's a video. This, I think, was posted by Georgia for one of our last tall ship cruises. So we are just suggesting and asking you guys to go ahead and put that STI Singles moniker or the STI Singles code into your own personal Facebook post so that everybody back home is able to see what you're doing while you're in Scandinavia and Russia. We would, we would appreciate it, and all the people back home would also totally appreciate it. They love seeing what's happening while, while you guys are on the road. Um, so I'm going to go back now for a minute. We've got the chat. We've taught you how to, learn, how to navigate the chat. There's a couple of other areas that I think are really helpful and important on our site. The first one is the Frequently Asked Questions tab. Frequently Asked Questions covers a lot of information that is important for you to know before you go. At this point, 60 days out, you've probably all reviewed it, but you are all responsible for the information that's listed here. It tells you how to schedule your flight. It talks about passport requirements. We talk about um, dining. We talk about um, other information about packing, what to wear, et cetera, et cetera. So this is kind of your place to go to get prepared for the trip in addition to the chat. Then we have one other, oh, before I move on to the help center, I wanted to um, let you all know that this very first question that says, I'm signed up for the cruise, what else do I need to know? 14 days before departure, if you expand this question, you're going to be able to see your final vacation details and need of information. That's going to be the document that tells you um, everything you need to know before you go. You're coming to London, where are you going to meet Georgia when you get to London? You're just joining us on the cruise, where do you meet Georgia when you get on board the cruise? So it's everything you need to know to get started, emergency contact information, etc. will be posted here on the Frequently Asked Questions page 14 days prior to departure. Let's say you read the FAQ and you still have some questions. No problem. We're ready for you. The best place to go is at the top of the any page that you're navigating. Click on the Help Center. It's also accessible here from Frequently Asked Questions. There it is, Help Center. So I'm going to click on the Help Center right now. You're able to search keywords if there's a particular area that you're interested in. 
And if you are logged in, let's say, um, Alton, I'm using you as an example again, you're logged into the website and you click on the Help Center, the frequently asked questions for your vacation will be listed right here, followed by our general terms and conditions. So it makes it easy. You don't have to navigate. All you have to do is log in, click Help, and all your frequently asked questions are there. If you want to um, send us an inquiry, just click on the Send Email button here. It automatically populates with all your personal information. And we answer those within 24 hours for the most part. Um, you can call us at 877-SOLO-TRIP, and there's our fax number. So if you want to send us questions directly, this is the place to do that. The chat, as I mentioned, is more for your own personal engagement. If you have specific questions about your vacation and things that you want to define, this is the best place for you to do that. That's the Help Center. So at this time, what I'm going to do is um, give you a brief overview about how to create a profile on the Royal Caribbean site. And the main thing that you're going to want to be able to do at the Royal Caribbean website is print your boarding card. Everything these days is electronic. So we sent you an invoice when you made your reservation with us. And on that invoice is a confirmation number. You're going to gather that along with some other information and go ahead and do the online check-in here at Royal Caribbean. So here's the web address www.royalcaribbean.com. On their home page, you're going to access the tab that says Already Booked. Once you're on the Already Booked tab, you're able to click on Online Check-In. From here, you're going to enter your last name, and I'm going to use Georgia as an example. You're going to put the departure date, which is the 28th of June, 2016. The ship is the navigator of the seas. English, if that's your language, or you can choose any other, and hit Submit. Now we're in Georgia's check-in. This is going to look the same way for you. Uh, you're going to begin your check-in from here, begin check-in, and follow step one, step two, step three, and step four. Once you've completed all four steps, you will be able to print your boarding card. Now, just kind of a word of advice. As I said earlier in the webinar, some of our members are super organized. They want to get all their ducks in a row early, get it done. Others are very last minute Charlie. If you attempt this online check-in and you notice that your roommate has not checked in yet, just go to the website, click on their profile and send them a message. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Let them know that you're ready to print your boarding cards and you were wondering when they're going to do the same. And at all at all causes, if for some reason you don't hear back from them, let us know and we'll make a contact. A lot of our members are very um, occupied, professional, single, and they don't attend to some of those details for the very last minute. So try them first and if you don't get a rise out of them, let us know and we'll, we'll be of assistance to you. If you have any technical problems while you're on this particular page, there's a number, big and bold, 800-398-9819. Call the, that number because that's Royal Caribbean's um, assistance line for online check-in and making other reservations while you're on board the cruise. So I'm going to refer back to um, where Alton had reserved his drink package and his other uh, specialty dining. All you have to do is hit right up here, I'm going to highlight it for everybody, 
it's tiny, right? We're baby boomers. Uh, so once you do your check-in, you can always click on exit and return to the Royal Caribbean. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Exit and review reservation. That's what you want to do, because if you exit and return to Royal Caribbean, you're exiting your reservation. You'll have to log back in again. So let's do exit and view reservation. Let's hope this works. And there we go. This is Georgia's overview. Um, and from here, you're, you have a cruise planner. So there's, right here is where you add your beverage package, dining, if you want to purchase an internet package, spa and fitness, Royal Caribbean has their own tour excursions. And all of that is able to be done right here in your cruise planner profile. So we do recommend that you do register in advance. We think that that's a great idea. Is it mandatory? No. But you will be able to see all of your information on here. So if you've added transfers with us, you'll see that listed. You see your cabin number um, and any other uh, miscellaneous additions to your reservation will be listed here. So it's a great validation point. Uh, we do think it's a good idea to print your boarding card in advance, but if you are not unable to do that, of course, you can just show up with your passport, check in, you've got the invoice from us, you know what your cabin number, you know what your reservation number is, and, uh, and, and, and that's all you really need to board the ship. So let's just do a little recap. Um, I think at this point, with 60 days left to go, the main thing that you're going to want to do is book your shore excursions as soon as possible. Get on the chat, meet your cruise mates, say hello, make some new friends, do some friend requests. Um, we're going to record this so that we'll post it on the chat tomorrow. So if you want to review it at a later time, that's, that's great. We endorse that. If you have questions, send us an email at service at singlestravelintl.com, which all you have to do is hit the help button and that goes automatically to us. Your final vacation details and meetup info will be available 14 days prior to departure on the FAQ tab. And we do want to remind you to check in at least 48 hours prior to departure if you want to print your boarding card. So I'm going to pull up my um, screen right now to see if we have any questions. We're going to open up to questions and answers right now. Um, and let's see what's happening here. We have a couple questions. Oh, that's great. But you guys can probably see this. We have lots of questions. Um, is the one night in London and the one-way transportation $7.79 per person? Is this correct? I'm I'm not, I, we, all of the prices are listed on the website, so let's address this. I hope this is answering the question. But if you are joining us in London, the prices are on the Price and Options tab, and the cost to join us in London, if you want to share for one night, it's $279, and the one night single occupancy is $3.99. That includes um, a get-together. Georgia will be there early. She's going to do a meet and greet on Monday night. She's also going to put together a little pub visit for happy hour and dinner. Of course, you'll pay for that at your own expense, but she'll organize it. And then the next day, we take you to the Navigator of the Seas with your luggage from Southampton to Southampton, which is about a two-hour ride. So um, it's not it's two seventy nine. Maybe that was a typo. I think so. It's two seventy nine, and we will match you with a roommate. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and make the plan. We have a, a, probably more than fifty percent of the members are coming in early because we want to make sure you catch the ship. If you fly in the day of the cruise, it's a super high risk. Uh, we offer a pre cruise package on all of our cruises, but this one in particular is a two hour ride from the Heathrow Airport to Southampton, and we've had experiences before that um, our members almost missed the ship. They were lucky they did not. But if you have any delay whatsoever, um, 
that's in question. So please, please consider the, the early arrival. And if you want to come back or stay a little bit early, there's already six or seven members that are coming in one day earlier than the package. We can organize that for you. And if you want transportation back to Gatwick, that's fine. Just send us your request to service at singletravelintl.com so that we're able to go ahead and organize it for you. That's, that's totally easily done. We're happy to do that for you guys. Because Gatwick and, um, Gatwick and uh, London Heathrow are equidistant pretty much from the city, so we could do that for you. Um, okay, the next question didn't really complete, so I'm going to see, like, um, how can we go about that? I'm not sure, Bob, about the question. Maybe you want to retype it. Um, Allie says hi from New Jersey. Hi, Allie. Sammy, <laughs> nice to meet you. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much. Nice to meet you, too. Um, who will pick us up at Gatwick on the morning of July 28th? So the cruise is June 28th to July 10th. I'm not sure. This is from Bobby. Um, if you are coming in on June 28th and you're taking a transfer with us, you're going to um, meet the Royal Caribbean representative in the luggage right after you pick up your luggage and go through customs. You will be met by the Royal Caribbean representative. This information will be specified in the final vacation details that we distribute to everybody 14 days prior to departure. But you're, if you bought the transfer with us, you will be um, met, and we will take care of that. But again, the main thing is to send your flight schedule to us at service at singlestravelintl.com so that we are able to organize your pickups and your departure transfers. It's very important that we have your flight schedule. There's a question from Sharon about foreign money. So yes, each country is its own country with its own monetary currency. So when you are in um, Russia, then you have Russian currency. When you're in uh, Finland, you have Finnish currency. All of that can be managed on board. The cruise line will exchange money for you every day. You are also able to get off the ship and go to a money exchange location and change it. It's a little intense because you do have several countries, and we understand that. Um, it's probably better to do it as you go versus to get all these currencies in advance because you are able to do the exchange on board the ship. And of course, this is a completely subjective um, amount because everybody's a little bit different. Some people shop more than others. So our recommendation would be perhaps to get some great British pounds either in advance at your local bank, or here's what I do. When I land at the airport, every airport in the world has a bank exchange. Is it the best rate? No. Are you changing a million dollars? No. So if you're changing $100 or so when you get into London Heathrow or London Gatwick, change 100 bucks. Get your British pounds, make your way to the hotel, and go from there. There's always opportunities at the hotel front desk, and then, of course, when you get on board the ship, you're able to exchange your money as you go. Um, there are ATM machines in each port. Just recommend that you check with your bank in advance. Let them know that you're traveling so they lift any kind of restrictions. Not very fun when you're in a shop and you finally decided on this beautiful piece of artwork or some special memento, and um, they go to run your card and it's declined. It's just going to take you a little bit longer, especially if you're on a tour. It will hold everybody up. So check with your bank. Let them know you're traveling. But I would strongly recommend just bring, um, just exchange at the airport when you get there, and then exchange with the cruise ship or an exchange rate when you get an exchange bank when you get into each port. Um, and this is the most important thing. These places uh, that you're visiting are not going to take U.S. dollars. That's a big, um, that's a big question always. It's a different country. They're not going to take U.S. dollars. So you will have to exchange, and I'm just kind of giving you cautious 
uh, parameters because at the end of the day, each time you leave a port, if you exchange several hundred and you don't spend it, you're going to have to exchange it back, which also incurs a fee for you. So I hope that helped answer your question. And I see also from Sharon another um, question about foreign currency. I think we covered that. So what are the temperatures going to be? Our FAQ page covers that. I'm just going to go back to that location. But the, the area that you're going to be in the world is only able to be visited by us comfortable Americans in the summer. That's the warmest time of the year. And it's not going to definitely be warm, but um, here it says on the site, average temperatures from most ports will be low to mid 80s. Evening 65 to 70. So it's a beautiful touring weather, comfortable, but our recommendation is always to wear layers. Bring, um, bring some shorts, bring slacks, have t-shirts, have fleeces, have some jackets, light weather jackets, cover up so that you can layer up in the morning, even though some of our tours are leaving conveniently at 10 or 10.30 as a single girl. But it's always nice to have these layers going so that as the day goes on and it gets warmer, you can take off some of the layers and later on in the evening, you're able to add them back on. Plus, the cruise ships can be quite chilly in, um, in the evening. They have air conditioning. These ships cater to Americans, so we have pretty strong air conditioning. So it's a good idea to, to be prepared for that. Well, at this point, it looks like we've covered all the questions. I'm just going to wait for a minute to see if there are any more from anybody. And I hope you enjoyed this evening. We certainly did. Georgia and Barry and I love to present to you guys. Uh, we hope this helps fill in a lot of gaps and that we answered your most uh, critical questions. And again, we are here. This, um, having a website doesn't mean that there aren't uh, live and interested in carrying people on the back end here because we certainly do care very much. So watch the chat for Georgia's updates about your vacation. If you have questions, send them to service at singlestravelintl.com. And you're always welcome to call us. I'm just going to minimize this right now. Love seeing all the faces. But here's our phone number. Eight seven seven solo trip. That's eight seven 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 six five six eight seven four. We're all happy to entertain your questions. Um, so I want to wish everybody a very happy, happy evening. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Everybody was on board, and that was super nice. We appreciate it. Um, so that's it. That's a wrap. We'll post this on the chat tomorrow. If anybody needs to review it, enjoy, and let us know if you have any other questions. Good night.